Right. So I studied the uh, Erythia canis and the Gala and treatment options. Um, my name is Steven. <laughs> uh, this is what I'm going to go through today. So uh, Erythia canis is an uh, obligate intercellular bacteria. Uh, here's some IFA images we took, so no fluorescent uh, assay. Um, what you're seeing here, this is a, uh, a monocyte or a macrophage that's been um, adhered to a slide. So you, we bought, these were bought. Um, and then uh, the, the, all these macrophages are already infected. So they adhere them to the slides. And then we take uh, serum from the dog. And if we want to know if it's positive or not, we wash the slide with its serum. And any antibodies in the dog serum to Erlithia canis will stick to the organisms. And you can see these are morula. So the Erlithia canis forms a morula, a little colony inside of the macrophage, using the macrophage endosome. Uh, and here's some more over here. Uh, these are some that have uh, ruptured out or some stain uh, that's accumulated. Uh, and so then what you do is you, you take a, a, an antibody to dog, because the dog is stuck to the, the bacteria, um, and you wash that across your other antibody on the slide, and there's a little fluorescent probe on that antibody. It's from a, uh, a sheep, I think, or a goat. Um, and it'll glow. And so we took these pictures right here. Um, so uh, Erlithia canis is vectored by Rupacyphilus sanguinis, the brown dog tick. Uh, these are some pictures that were done by students here. Uh, the, even the nymph stage, this very youngest stage, it's white and you can hardly see it. You have to really be looking for it. It can get infected with Erlithia canis and then it carries it throughout its life. However, it won't, um, it, it's not vertically transmitted in AIDS or anything like that. Uh, the tick is endemic, definitely here in, in much of the world. These are some pictures of a student's dog that is uh, infested. One of the things that makes the tick so successful, the brown dog tick, is that it, it doesn't want to live in the forest. It doesn't want to live in the bushes or the trees. It wants to live in your house. It wants to live in a dog's kennel, things like that. So this is um, some ticks that are uh, hiding out underneath the windowsill. And this is what they prefer. They don't want to live down low. They want to live up high. They want to live where it's warm. Um, they're very active when it's warm. And the, the cycle um, goes, the life cycle goes very well in a person's home. So they love laying their eggs in like rocks, so they have fireplace hearts, and like this would be perfect for them. Um, and then they go through their whole life cycle. <clears throat> um, so the, the disease that we're interested in is canine monocytic ehrlichiosis. Uh, this is one of our research dogs. You can see there's actually a tick right here on his eye. There's a tick right here in the back of his head. You can see a huge hematoma in his ear. Um, these are his initial um, CBC values. Um, so probably Ehrlichia canis and canine monocytic ehrlichiosis is a very variable uh, presentation. One of the consistent things that's found is thrombocytopenia, so low blood, blood platelets. Ehrlichiosis um, has worldwide distribution, and uh, specifically ehrlichiosis in the U.S. And this is a pretty cool website, CAPSI. Uh, it's available here. Uh, so it's C-A-P-C. Uh, so you could click on each of these states and see what the prevalence in that particular state is. So a pretty neat website. Um, so our study, we looked at two different um, streams of dog. One stream of dogs was um, from the student spay lab. So dogs would come to the student spay lab, so in the seventh semester you go and spay a dog or a cat or a um, neuter one. Uh, and so the students uh, routinely draw a purple top. And from that purple top, uh, they do their CBCs, but there's a little bit of blood left over. So we use that blood, we, um, we did a 40X plus SNAP test, that's by IDEX. And we ruled out that they, did, they were not infected with antiplasm in the heart, were in line, and were infected with, or, or were positive for lipid canis, that's the antibody. So at some point they were exposed. Once we knew they were exposed, we did PCR on the blood. Um, and if they were positive, we accepted them into the study. They were randomly assigned an antibiotic, minocycline or doxycycline, and then we followed the dog throughout the study. The second stream of dogs um, recruited from local owner, and um, 
we, we, uh, we brought them in and we did a blood draw and collected ticks. Then we did the same thing. We did the 40X NAP test, we did PCR. If they were positive, then we enrolled them into the study and we housed them in the kennel. And we followed them every week. Uh, team students would go out and draw blood on these dogs. Uh, so we housed them for an initial uh, 28 days to let them acclimate to the food and to treat them for their tick infestations, things like that. Um, and then we followed them weekly for 28 days of treatment. The recommended treatment um, is uh, 10 days per kid, oxycycline, for 28 days. And there's been some reports that um, there's failures in treatment, so dogs will be treated for 28 days for five years and still be positive in some cases. And so we wanted to look at maybe uh, the same class of antibiotic, so tetracycline, but a more lipophilic drug than minocycline. So the data we collected, of course, here we use Atomar. And so uh, all that data was entered into Atomar. Um, also, uh, we use at the Info 7. And this is, uh, the CDC produces this. It's uh, version 7 of it is pretty good. And so we could actually use this software. Uh, it's, it's, I guess, the, um, the Microsoft version of what Tara was talking about. And so we could build a template to collect our data in and then enter it directly into the computer and then uh, even do analysis through the software. Once we had the data, we uploaded it into Azure, which is uh, Microsoft's cloud. Uh, probably we went to, our server was probably in Virginia, Virginia one or two. Um, so these are the servers here. So that, that software was on a smartphone or it was on a computer or laptop or whatever. And it just got uploaded to Azure. So available worldwide. Um, our results, basically no difference in treatment statistically. However, our sample size was small. We ended up with five dogs in each cohort. Um, and so uh, possibly of interest is that the, the medium time to clearance for the minocycline was two weeks versus one week in doxycycline. So by the end of the 28 days, all dogs were negative in PCR. Like PCR in the peripheral blood. This is a kind of a typical representation of what you might see in the platelets. This is from one dog. So this is the first blood draw. This is the second blood draw a week later. Probably what really happens is in two days, the platelets are recovered, two or three days. It's very rapid, but we didn't have data for that. So in this dog, the platelets uh, maybe rebounded a little bit and then the dog recovered its platelets. There were a lot of people that worked on this project, and I'm very proud of that. There were four research assistants, they all got paid. So there was a, a team that would have to go out and draw blood, and there was a team that was here in the lab doing lab work, entering huge amounts of data. I mean, all the CBC value had to get entered. Uh, it was quite an undertaking for them. Um, there were also seven research volunteers involved in this project, and they did all kinds of things from the 40X SNAP test, to in entering data, to spinning samples, to uh, running PCR. It was a lot of fun. The, the RUSD and Diagnostic Lab got inundated once a week with <laughs> many, many samples to process. Um, uh, the pharmacy managed all our drugs for us. There were a lot of veterinarians involved in this here at Ross, um, and also, of course, at the kennel where we house the dogs. Um, and there's so many more people that are you know, purchasing um, the technician at uh, the kennels, and on and on and on. In the future, we'd like to look more at the spay dogs. We haven't evaluated those dogs. Um, and also, we'd like to look more at the CBC and chemistry data. Anyone has any questions?